WVU versus Kentucky Saturday NCAA tournament. Marco, who do you like and why? Well, Kentucky, this is your wake-up call. I like Kentucky. And, RJ, every year in the tournaments, there's always a team that has a major scare and then survives the scare. And I've seen it year after year. It's almost like it, it lights a fire under that team and it, it propels them on to go to a deep run. And I think that's all the makings of Kentucky. And I'll explain that theory. And then I'll also explain why they did struggle in their opening round game. Kentucky is a team that started the year. It seemed young. like you were going to let me say something there. I thought about it and then I changed my mind. <laughs> I'm going I'm to jump in. Okay. I like what you're saying. And this goes back to one of your theories in the regular season, if I'm not mistaken, where you have if a team doesn't cover it, wins but doesn't cover at home, then when they go on the road they play because it's like it's the, it's the fact that they got scared but the public still thought they won. Explain that theory and what I think you it's get, applicable. What you get is this, when a big favorite has a close win by a few points and then in their next game they're favorite again but they're a smaller favorite, which in theory says you're playing a better team you've got line value because the public's going to make an adjustment and Vegas is going to make an adjustment. Public makes an adjustment with their eyes. They saw that close score and say, oh, this team's not as good as we thought they were. Vegas knows what the public's going to do based on what they saw, so they shave the line a little bit. So now you get a team with some value on the line, but you also get a team now that's focused because let's say that was a lackluster game and they weren't totally focused, the coach now in practice the next, you know, before the next game, he can drill them and, you know, give them, light the fire underneath them, and you get a great effort in the next game. Now, what's the distinction between that scenario and when the team actually loses the game? Well, if they lose the game, now you're talking, you know, a whole different mindset because you did screw up. So now you've got to look at the bounce back mode and I treat teams that are in coming off a loss different than I do teams that are coming off a win. To me, you can have a negative carryover from a loss because you screwed up, you feel bad. Yeah, you want to get back out there and make amends for it, but still you know you screwed up and you know and you made the mistake. Whereas when you just dodge that bullet, it just you know like, whew, man, we were lucky, you know, we got to get focused and we almost had our season go up in flames like you know, Louisville had yesterday. So in the tournament, I don't think the close call, I think the public side of it is correct, which is that the public is, is not as high on Kentucky now as they would have been if they would have blown out their first round opponent. Right. But I think the sense of, oh, we better get serious because we played a close game, I think that's there in the second round of the NCAA tournament no matter what, unless you're number one seed playing like a really bad number nine or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think what it might be in this case a little different than the regular season is a, a sense of a team of destiny, like we're here because we maybe got lucky, we can't allow luck to play a factor anymore, which is slightly different than focus and motivation. So from a situational standpoint, it lines me up on Kentucky. Now from a fundamental standpoint, we're, we're going to come in and we're going to give you the double barrel shot. All here. right. And, uh, you know, all we can do, guys, is, you know, I can bring you the work. Uh, you know, yesterday, the first round of the uh, tournament, I didn't do good. You know, I'm not going to, you know, hide the fact. But, you know, we still do the work, you know, and we, you do the thought process. And if everything you look at and you think about makes sense to you, then you've got to keep doing what you're doing and it'll, you know, it'll write itself. But here's the situation. Kentucky started the year as a young ball club. And we've talked about this numerous times on podcasts. When you're dealing with a 30-some game season, the evolution of a team from the beginning of the season, middle of the season, to the end, there's a growth process. And in college basketball, it's bigger than any other sport. And plus the fact, college basketball, like the rest of the sports, most of these superstars, they're two years in they're out. Yeah, so let's say for the sake of argument, that the average career is two years for the really good players in college. And let's say that they play 70 games over that time just to throw a round mm -hmm. number. Being 30-some games in the season means they've gone from, if they were freshmen, from 0% to almost 50% of their career. Or if they're second year, they've gone from 50 to almost 100. Clearly a big difference. Absolutely. This Kentucky team, much better team the second half of the season. Now, go to that first round game and what happened. We've talked about different styles when you play in the tournaments. And I said, and I believe it firmly, that when you have a team that's such a contrary style, and Princeton is a severe slowdown team, that it's 
it's the equalizer when you're, you know, when the other team's got better athletes. You can't go into a team and play their strength when they have better athletes because they're just going to pound you. But when you can get that team to play your style, which is your strength, you, that's the equalizer. And that's what Princeton was able to do. West Virginia prefers more of an up-tempo game. That runs right into Kentucky's, you know, strength. Runs. Key word. So I think this sets up perfect. People will look at the Big East. Power Dog will look at this. The, you know, they'll look at uh, the SEC and say Vanderbilt lost. Kentucky barely won. Other than Florida, the SEC doesn't look that strong. They'll want to take the Power Dog in the Big East. And you know I love the Big East. So for me to go against the Big East team, I like Kentucky here. Well, I tell you, one, I think it was a heck of a presentation. You, you've gotten a little more articulate. I wonder what, <laughs> is it just practice or oh, what, what do you think? You know, hey, we've been doing this for, you know, for 31 years. The only person I had to talk to was myself when I was picking the games, you know? <laughs> you've, you, you've gotten better, so okay, kudos well, on that. You know, I agree with a lot of things you're saying. One, you said you didn't have a good day. What was your top picks yesterday? Um, well, the video plays, we went 0-2 here yesterday. No, I, I was neutral on but... well, I went 0-2, okay. Yeah. But we, we, I got an assist, though, on the San Diego State when we got the, uh, we talked to oh, the, I, the did, half, you did, know. Did I cover on that? Yeah, you covered on the halftime. All right, so let's think about that a second. Oh, so my. I'm why did I do what? And you're... Producer well, Dustin, why didn't you cut my mic when I start to say something <laughs> stupid? No, just <laughs> listen, the truth is profound. It doesn't yeah, matter if you like it. It'll set you free. It yeah. will set you free. <laughs> Um, so what were your main uh, late telephones or your premium stuff at pregame? Yesterday, uh, I went one and four for the day. So. No, but what was your best bet? I just wanted to see if you were on the same. Because the Sharps got beat pretty bad, too. Yesterday, my top play yesterday, uh, unfortunately, was uh, I had Missouri as one of my top plays. And we had Temple yesterday, which we lost yeah. by half a point. A lot of people, I mean, you looked, if you look at the big line moves, they didn't do Belmont was one of the biggest picks. So a lot of people did poorly yesterday. So I guess when I do poorly and it's mm -hmm. the same as the days the Sharps do poorly, mm -hmm. I don't feel so don't bad. Feel so bad. Um, only thing that slows me down a little bit here is, one, I don't like betting marquee teams just in general. I think you're laying an extra half here, half point. Two, they're not a good road team. And I, I agree in general they've improved in all facets, but the tournament is a road game. So I'm going to go neutral on this one. You want to give your official projection? My official projection is Kentucky 78, West Virginia 70. All right, it's your turn to continue the conversation in the comment section with Marco and me. And next up, we're going to give you a second Saturday NCAA tournament game.